Hey everybody, it's Adam. I am out on the tour, touring 32 cities in 36 days. This is my tour bus. One of the things I wanted to do a couple times during this tour was to stop and talk to some kids in different places about STEM or STEAM, because art has to be a part of it, and my experience of it. Try to normalize what it is to be a myth buster. And well, today I visited an amazing place. I talked to the kids and the faculty at a place called the Utopia Academy for the Arts. Check it out right now. Artesius, can you tell me about the mission of the Utopian Academy, what, what your goal is here? Absolutely. So our mission statement, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, through a structured and supportive environment, Utopian Academy for the Arts prepares students for a four-year college, university, or specialty school of their choice. And the reason I say specialty school of their choice is because our school focuses on the arts. So we want to expose our students to uh, universities, but then also schools that may specialize in different areas in which they're introduced here at our school. You all are looking at the Utopian TV channel. Okay, you have a TV channel. I'm on a TV for real. It's all in your work. This is Artesius Miller, founder of the Utopian Academy of the Arts. Artesius moved mountains to open this academy and is deeply committed to making creative arts an essential part of a utopian education. How, how come you decided to focus on the arts? At the time I was actually working to start Utopian, the arts were taken completely out of Clayton County Public Schools, which is the local district that um, our school uh, sits right next to. Um, so with the arts being taken out and knowing how research shows that it really works extremely well in communities where the demographics are aligned with our school, I wanted to make sure that I reinstilled the arts into the curriculum. You have how many kids? Two we have approximately 240. 240. I taught very briefly a bunch of years ago, but I found that the thing I was most addicted to was um, getting a kid to go, <gasps> like yeah. that. I imagine you're getting a lot of that here as you're exposing them to different aspects of the arts, but also exposing them to a consciousness of what's possible. I think uh, our kids come to school excited each and every day. And one of the reasons they come to school with that ah uh, moment is because they find different elements in our school's program that they enjoy the most. And a lot of it does root back to the art. I mean, they enjoy the math, the science, social studies and language arts, but when you give a student the opportunity to pick an element of the art where they can express themselves, it's, it's truly incredible to see. It's, it's very inspiring what you've built here. Thank you, thank you. Can you tell me what's E flat minus a half? E flat minus a half is D. Yes. So what I'm doing is giving every musical definition a math definition. So we're looking at the piano as a number line. Mm -hmm. Addition means you count this way. Subtraction means you count this way. All right. This strikes me as not dissimilar. Like a real mathematician would also have an innate sense of an equation feeling right or feeling wrong. That's right, yes, that's right. Like the yes. numbers have a shape at a certain mm -hmm. point, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're kind of directly applying synesthesia. Mm -hmm. That's right, mm -hmm. yeah. D plus half is um, D sharp. How many have you counted so far? I've counted three. Okay. And D sharp plus half is E, and E, e, e plus half is L. I've counted four. So okay. you've counted four? Utopian Academy is a unique school. And that is in part because Artesius has found innovative teachers who are cultivating new methods of instruction. Meet Marcus Blackwell, the pianist and mathematician behind Make Music Count, a new mathematics curriculum combining algebra and piano playing. Make Music Count equates mathematic values to piano keys, and every time a student solves an expression, well, there we go. Right. That sounds right, too. Exactly, <laughs> and that's the point. If it sounds right, that means your math is right. Where did you get the impetus to do this? What, what inspired you at the beginning? This is a solution to my own uh, intimidation of mathematics that I had when I was growing up. A lot of times I was told that I wasn't supposed to be good at math, but I loved math. And so what made sense was playing the piano. I played the piano since I was five classical, jazz, and, and gospel. And it's always just been an interest to yeah. me to see how math and music connected. And so what I did was when I went to Morehouse for undergrad, I uh, was like, okay, I need to get this idea out of my head, you know, 
but I have the music background, but I need the math background. So what I did was I said, well, if this is going to be real, I need to use my music to really get over my intimidation, and I'm going to major in mathematics. Wow. <laughs> I, switched my, <laughs> I switched my major from business to math. And so I just had an epiphany one evening. I was at my piano, and I was trying to put together music terms and math terms just to see what would happen. And I just saw something, and I yeah. said, okay, that is what I'm looking for. Yeah. But it didn't become real, like learning an actual example, until I actually went and tested it out. Um, with kids? With kids. Yeah. I went to my first school. I said, hey, I've got an idea. Can I try it out with your students? And I had this big old long equation that I was showing them. And the lady, she was like, this is nice, but can you just teach them two chains on the piano? Like right. a, a song we'd know. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then it, that's how, you know, it just, I was able to relate it to the students. I said, okay, so instead of doing what I brought, yeah. We're going to learn a song that you already know and then apply the, the math to it. B flat, F, and B flat, mm -hmm. and then C, mm -hmm. G sharp, E flat. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Want me to play it first and then you Yeah, play? please, because okay, I'm not going to get fast So it just goes this. like this. And it's just repeating That's over so and over again. That's so satisfying. Right, exactly. <laughs> so then, then it becomes band rehearsal. Right. Because you've done the math, now it's just putting it to, all together. But of course, if you do this enough, you start to really understand that the underlying structure of all of these songs is relatively simple. Right. And you get this right. beautiful complexity right. out of it. Each reveals the other. Exactly. The math reveals what's in the music, and the music reveals what's in the math. That's Absolutely. fantastic. Yeah. What's happening is that after they learn an example, they'll go home and say, they'll come back and say, hey, can we do this song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we do this song? Can we do this song? And it's like, well, sure. but. There's more math to learn. They're like, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> but it's a complete attitude change. You know, yeah. before, these kids wouldn't even attempt to do this at all. Right. You know, now it's, math is now, it's no problem. Right. You know, and, and that's, that's the, that's what we want. You know, this is about changing our attitude towards mathematics, using music. And the kids are absolutely loving it.